What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's review we're going to be taking a look at the Zeus Toys ZS01 oversized Transformers Studio Series Shockwave. A third party that initially I was so excited for. As you all know Shockwave is my favourite Decepticon character and his Studio Series rendition is probably one of the best to ever come out of the Studio Series. So when it was announced that there was going to be an oversized and enhanced version of Shockwave I was extremely ecstatic however I've got to be upfront and say to you that this figure isn't all amazing now before I get on to the review if you are in the market for picking this figure up he is available and in stock right now over at Shozy store and for that I will leave a link down in the description box below but getting back now to the review this figure was one that I was so excited for and unfortunately it does let me down in so many ways and mainly in its build quality and its structure which I will go through when we cover the robot mode so taking a look here we have shockwave in his tank mode and you'll all probably notice that this isn't too dissimilar to that of the original studio series leader shockwave which i'll bring out for a comparison later on the only molding that they've actually changed on this is the tube the tube now actually has ball joints in it which i actually much prefer than the rubbery hose that we get on the studio series version so the hose is indeed poseable and i don't worry about it degrading over time which i can't say the same for the actual joints which is unfortunate they have enhanced the plastic for the nozzle of the cannon, meaning that it is now a very firm plastic and not rubberized. The entire blade is a new sculpt as well, so just putting that off and giving you a closer look at that. You can see this is now made out of an incredibly firm plastic and you can see the silver dry brushing effect and it's completely filled in so it's not hollow and it's definitely not rubberized. They have changed the hand to this figure. They've also changed the head sculpt. They've changed some of the components to do with Shockwave's fires. They've also completely changed this whole back assembly. These are nothing like the Studio Series versions. These do actually detach and do have an LED function which is super cool. But for the most part, other than that, it is essentially just your enlarged oversized version of the studio series shockwave which was an amazing figure so to get it in a larger more grander scale to me was amazing when it was first announced now it does roll really nicely as well it's very heavy i do believe that there could potentially be some die cast in this it definitely does feel like a very substantial and weighty piece and for a comparison here we have the Transformers Studio Series Leader Class Shockwave. And you can see that the new oversized version just completely dwarfs the Studio Series version, but you can definitely see the similarities. I mean, as I stated, this is basically just an upscaled version of this with a few enhancements to the overall design. However, I've got to be upfront and say that the Hasbro version in terms of plastic feels so much better. This is really and truly the first oversized figure that I've picked up where you can definitely tell this is a KO. Now, unfortunately, I did have a breakage issue and I will demonstrate that when we do get into the robot mode. One of my legs did snap completely off and I am aware that the breakage in the actual legs is a universal issue that has been apparent on many copies of this figure and Shozy have actually come out and said that they will offer replacement parts to any customer who purchases this and actually gets broken joints. So I am sure that Shozy will be able to get me some replacement parts so that I can fully recorrect the wrongs that I originally had on my initial copy but you just really shouldn't have breakages on a figure especially when you open out the package this figure literally broke within two minutes of me handling it which is really poor quality of course these things have to go through QC and I definitely don't think that this product did which is evident that this is in fact a KO which is so unfortunate as the figure actually does look amazing but setting the negatives off to the side and just getting the comparison out of the way you can clearly see that this is truly an upscale and just completely dwarfs the original leader studio series so this one ranges to about 50 pounds this one here the oversized is a hundred so double the price but I would say that it's definitely more than double the plastic of what you get for this despite the plastic on this definitely being a lot cheaper than the official Hasbro version but just setting that off to the side and taking a look at some of the LED features so you can see a button here that once pressed does in fact activate an incredibly strong LED in the blaster which looks super cool and then we can also get into the back of the head and you can have Shockwave's head lit up within tank mode as well, which I think looks super cool. And then if we flip around to the back of the figure, we can pop all of these off. I will only demonstrate it on one. And then you can push this button here 
and the actual turbine section at the back will light up in a really bright red LED as well, which is super cool to see. And of course you can just peg it on like that. I personally would have liked it if they could have found a way to, so that you could just push the buttons at the front so that you didn't have to continuously keep popping them on and off in order to turn the LED function off. Something like they did with the cannon or the head would have been great if it was just a simple button, but I think that it is okay and I guess it's moderately accessible as well, which isn't too bad. So just turning off those LED features will now begin to transform this figure up. Now, as stated, this is exactly the same as the actual Studio Series version. So if you have that figure, the transformation of this will be a complete breeze. You just want to come to the back and begin detaching the arms. Just lift these up and then hold these sections out. We can then take these legs here and just detach those and then lift this one up. Now, this was actually the leg that broke. I have put a screw for it just to hold it in for the review, but it's definitely not going to hold. It's lost its complete ratchet capability. The entire leg did shear straight off and I will showcase a picture of that throughout this video so that you can actually see, which is so unfortunate. So this is definitely an issue that I would highly recommend you watch out for if you are considering to pick this figure up. You then just want to compress the legs inwards and snap those into place. And then for the feet, it's just compressing these double joints and folding this section around. So repeat the same process here for this side. Let's fold out these spikes, collapse that in, and then just fold the heel spur around. And then raising the camera up so you can see what I'm doing at the top. You just want to collapse the head down, and then this section here will detach, and you just hinge all of this up and tap this into place. Pull all this down, snap that into place, and then just collapse this whole assembly in upon itself. Move the arms out of the way tab that in and then just clip the arms in exactly the same as on the Studio Series version. And there we have our oversized Shockwave fully transformed up into his rather awesome looking robot mode. And so here we have the oversized Shockwave fully transformed up into his glorious looking robot mode. And that is definitely something I can strongly say in this video is that this figure looks amazing. It's just not made out of the highest quality of plastic, which is such a shame as if the company who produced this, I do believe it's Zeus Toys, if they had just enhanced some of the joints, this figure honestly could have been one of my favorite third party releases of this year. The Transformers Studio Series Shockwave is an amazing figure and anyone who owns that will know that it's really truly one of the best figures that Hasbro have put out. So to get an upscale with your masterpiece figures and some additional enhancements really amplifies this figure and makes it possibly the most accurate representation we will ever get of the DOTM Shockwave. It's just such a shame that the plastic on this figure fails on so many levels, not even the breakage issue. There are various ratchet problems that I have with this figure which just do not hold up whatsoever. So first of all we'll go into detail and then we'll talk about articulation. So starting off with the head sculpt, it looks magnificent. Now this is completely different to the original version, which I'll bring out a comparison with later on. You can see here that he's got some amazing molded in teeth and these have actually been painted in a super nice silver paint. And with the red LED on, it truly brings Shockwave to life and just gives him so much character. Just giving you a closer look at that head sculpt. It really does look absolutely fantastic. And then as we turn around now to the back, you can see all of the turbines, which all look super cool. And of course, as I showed Case earlier on, all of these can light up in an LED. However, as these are shown from the back, I'm not necessarily going to mess around with the LED function of this too much. You can see here that this entire chest region also is really nicely detailed. It's almost double layered, so you can actually see another panel underneath this, which just gives some depth to this character. And you can see all of the nice gold paint apps there. And the purple wash on this figure is also quite nice as well. And I just think the arm cannon is super detailed. However, of course, this is carried over directly from the Studio Series version. And I really do like the articulated hose that you do get on this. All of the joints that you can see are indeed ball joints, so they really do pose in whatever way you so choose. However, the ratchet joints are incredibly loose, but I'll discuss that more when we get into the articulation segment. I really do like how this whole section here where the bicep is indeed a separate piece. So once again, it definitely adds layers to the figure and just makes him look more authentic. And then you can see the arms look super cool, as well as the really awesome molded hand, which definitely I think amplifies the look of the figure. The detail on these, as well as the articulation is fantastic. And here we've got the huge shockwave blade, which you can of course store on the underside, much like you could do on the Studio Series version. However, for the oversized, I just think it looks so much cooler 
on the side of his arm. And then as we turn our attention to the crutch, you can see once again, the loose leg, which is due to breakage. And if I hadn't put a screw in this, it really would have been flopping. So I won't demonstrate anything on this, but just showing you the detail in the leg. For the most part, this is identical to the Studio Series version. However, they have completely remolded the fires. So these aren't just a carryover of the ROTF Megatron fire design. These are completely new to this company. And this is where I actually think the problem lies. I don't think they should have changed the sculpt as I do think that could be one of the reasons why these fires are so prone to breaking is that they're just not designed to hold this type of figure, which is very unfortunate. In terms of articulation, the head is on a ball joint, so it's really fully articulated. And utilizing this hinge joint here, you can get this figure looking in whatever way you so desire. The range of motion in the head truly is awesome. All of these pieces are on ball joints, so can rotate the full 360, hinge up and down in whatever way you so desire. The arms are on ratchet, so can rotate the full 360, as well as hinge out to the sides. Rotation at the upper part of the elbow, ratcheted joint at the elbow. And this hand does indeed have wrist articulation as well as a hinge joint and all of the fingers are articulated in different points in the fingers which is super cool the weight of this arm is just too heavy for the ratchets that they've used to actually hold so if you lift it up it will simply just collapse down even when you do that so that is really unfortunate seeing as how the gun really does make the character of shockwave it is unfortunate that you can't really get this figure posed in very many dynamic poses without the ratchets failing which is really such a shame rotation just above the elbow as well as a 90 degree ratcheted bend and of course we do get the finger articulation in terms of the legs they can ratchet forwards that far and back that far as well as out to the sides rotation here at the upper part of the fire as well as a ratcheted knee about 90 degrees the foot can pivot forwards and backwards as well as hinge out side to side so for the most part other than the hands the articulation is exactly the same as the studio series version for a quick size comparison, here we have the oversized Shockwave compared next to the original Studio Series Shockwave and the Hasbro and Takara masterpiece movie Bumblebee. You can see that he completely towers over Bumblebee, which in my opinion is perfect NPM scale. So if you are after a Shockwave to scale with your NPM figures, I definitely think that this is the figure to pick up. And you can see that he completely towers over the figure that he was based upon, that being the Studio Series version. So that was my review on the oversized Shockwave. I'm really sorry that this video wasn't as perhaps as positive as some of my previous videos. I just have to highlight some of the issues that this figure has. And believe me, it does have a lot. All of them, which I believe to be structural issues, which which could have been prevented before this figure did in fact release so it's such a shame that the company who made this didn't just do those final checks to ensure that everything was working on this figure as the problem with the hips is universal i've seen multiple reports of the hips actually breaking so i'm sure that if some of the designers of this had just messed around with it they would have been able to tell that the hips were indeed a problem and that's just because this entire piece is hollow and is merely held on by a very cheap piece of plastic which can easily shear off whilst i am aware that shows store is offering a replacement part service for this figure it's really not fair on the seller nor the buyer to actually have to compensate for the manufacturer's problems. You know, this figure should come to you in perfect condition and you really shouldn't have to worry about this figure breaking whatsoever. Some of the problems that I've incurred with this figure really remind me of the earlier days of DC Collectibles and DC Direct, where you would spend so much money on a particular figure and the joints were made out of incredibly rubbish plastic and would just shear off at the slightest movement. And that is definitely what I get from this figure, which once again is just so unfortunate and is something that you shouldn't experience. I could only recommend this figure to you if you are willing to take the risk. There is a chance that you could get this and there'd be no problems with it whatsoever. However, there is a chance that you could get this and your legs could just completely crumble and fall off. And obviously, Shozy Store is offering the replacement part service, so I'm sure you'll be able to replace those parts, but you're going to have to open the entire figure up in order to exchange those joints, which I personally just don't think you really should do. So I can't personally recommend this figure to you until the company who made this do a second rerun and perfect some of the issues that this figure had. But taking a look at it from an actual visual appeal, this is an amazing representation of Shockwave. The head sculpt looks amazing. The paintwork for the most part is quite nice. In some areas, it's rather shoddy and does look as if though it's just been very quickly done. There are certain parts of the figure which look slightly more silver than they ought to, which is once again unfortunate. They need to fix the ratchet joints in the arms and they definitely need to fix the hip joints. So with all that being said, if you are in the market for picking this figure up, I will leave a link down in the description box below to Shozy Store where you can pick this figure up. I hope that you enjoyed this review and until my next review, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.